Welcome to Lecture 21 of Aerospace Propulsion. This is the third of three lectures related to engine matching off design. In the last lecture, we developed a method for uh, determining the off design performance of a two shaft turbofan engine, uh, but we didn't get to apply it. So today, the first thing we'll do is apply that approach um, to the new efficient aircraft engines that were designed earlier in this course. Um, and then uh, we'll look briefly at the application or, or essentially of how we would develop such a method for a three shaft engine. The key messages to take away from today's lecture are that at a constant cruise Mach number, turbofans respond as follows when the turbine inlet temperature is decreased from the design value. The bypass ratio, the propulsive efficiency, efficiency and the specific fuel consumption all increase and the jet velocity thermal efficiency, overall efficiency, and net thrust decrease. For three shaft engines, the main difference uh, between these and a two shaft engine is in the operating lines for the core compressors. The intermediate pressure compressor has quite large variations in mass flow in this kind of engine, while the high pressure compressor barely moves from its design point during any uh, excursions from design for the overall engine. So here's just a brief reminder of the solution procedure that we developed last time for high bypass ratio two shaft turbofan engines. So we would specify the off design T04 over T02 that we're interested in, and then guess a new fan pressure ratio, compute the temperature rise across the booster. You can then get the overall pressure ratio and temperature ratio of the engine. Um, we then determine the core mass flow from consideration of the uh, choked high pressure turbine inlet flow. And then you can determine the bypass mass flow and whether the bypass nozzle is choked or not. Computing, then you can compute the bypass ratio, use the low pressure shaft power balance to get the total temperature ratio across the low pressure turbine, and also that's therefore the pressure ratio across that turbine. And then you can compute the non-dimensional mass flow in the core propulsive nozzle, basically at its exit, and recalculate the associated core mass flow. And if that doesn't agree with your result from step three, then you basically have to adjust the fan pressure ratio and try again. So before um, we go and apply this approach to the new efficient aircraft engines, um, I just want to give a couple of updates to the modeling approaches. Um, so we're now using different gas properties in the compressors and then downstream of the combustor. Um, and whereas we designed for 90% isentropic efficiencies of all components um, to make life easier, um, now we're going to design for 90% polytropic efficiency. This basically means that sort of the procedure for determining the um, behavior of the low pressure system as well as some of the temperatures and pressures in the high pressure system for uh, these, uh, the new efficient aircraft engines have to be recomputed. And that's basically done in the background in the text here. Um, and the results are as follows. So uh, basically we increase the bypass ratio as a result of this, essentially because the, the machines are more efficient uh, at 90% polytropic efficiency than they are at 90% um, isentropic efficiency. Um, now the old bypass ratio of 11.2 is already a riddle, little high compared to sort of practical engines with this kind of fan pressure ratio, which you'd expect to be maybe closer to 10. Um, but when we apply the polytropic efficiencies and the differing gas properties, we actually get a bypass ratio of 13 and a half. Um, and again, this is because the turbines are producing more work um, because they're more efficient. Um, but since the engine performance actually depends on fan pressure ratio, not bypass ratio, um, this change isn't particularly important. It would change sort of the size of the engine for a given thrust requirement. Um, but in terms of the off design performance, when we look at the variation of things relative to their design values, it doesn't really make any difference at all. So the procedure developed last time is then applied, and what we look at here is the variation of T04 over T02 and how that affects everything else. This is done at the cruise Mach number and cruise altitude um, to sort of mean that, uh, so P02 and T02 essentially stay the same as well as PA. Um, this sort of helps minimize the free variables. Uh, and the maximum value of turbine inlet temperature here at 6.52, this corresponds to 1600 K, whereas design was 1500 K. And what you can see here is this increases the net thrust by uh, about 
The specific fuel consumption de increases slightly as the turbine temperature is lowered, which shouldn't be a big surprise. Um, and of course, the gross and net thrust fall. The uh, SFC variation is related to the change in the various efficiencies of the engine, both the overall propulsive and thermal efficiencies. Remember, we can write our overall efficiency as the flight velocity divided by the calorific value of the fuel times the SFC. So that these are inversely proportional. So we see the overall efficiency, of course, then rise, uh, goes down as the SFC goes up um, when we lower T0 4 over T0 2. Um, and it doesn't vary a lot, but it's interesting because actually the reason it doesn't vary a lot is because of uh, opposite significant changes in propulsive and thermal efficiency. So the thermal efficiency goes up significantly with increasing T0 4 over T0 2, but the propulsive efficiency goes down. Now, what do you think the reasons are for these variations in propulsive and thermal efficiency um, at constant flight, Mach number, and altitude? So think about this for a couple minutes before you move on to the next part of the video. We'll also take this up during the tutorial.